Welcome to Abbey Clubhouse, with a review of the high-grade Universal Sentry Delta Gundam, which you may be surprised to know actually never had any sort of physical design or an illustration prior to the 2010s, even though the concept of the Delta Gundam itself has been around since the 80s. That's why this guy is labeled under the Gundam Unicorn MSV rather than the Zeta Gundam MSV, because that's where this design actually comes from. The resulting model kit is also a bit of a phantom curiosity in the HGUC Hakushiki family. Getting right down to business, the HUC Delta Gundam was released in March 2012 and it sold for an eye-watering price of 4,536 yen because of the crazy chrome plating that we're going to see in a bit. The box is illustrated by Tomotake Kinoshita, so we already are in the cohort of modern HUC box artists here. The box itself measures 31 by 19 by 8 centimeters, so it is a standard HG box but it is just a little bit thicker. The short side of the box tells us that this is the 136 release in the HUC line, and it also tells us that this is a chrome plated kit, and everything else is repeated from the front of the box. The other side is exactly the same. The long side of the box only has a few studio shots and the legal text is on this side, which is a bit unusual. The other side has the front and the back shot, and then a lot of space given to the information about the Delta Gundam, though this was before English text was made standard. Inside the box, it'll immediately strike you just how intensely chrome and shiny this kit is. We really don't get retail kits in full chrome like this much anymore, and it's exceedingly rare to have this be the default rather than as some kind of limited edition on P Bandai. The Delta Gundam itself is spread across 10 runners with one of them for the polycaps and then another one for the beam saber blades. This runner here is taken from the Delta Plus and it still has a name on here and everything, but actually it's not the entire same thing, because there's this section here that's added on that's only for the Delta Gundam, with this itty bitty name tag that's added on. Most of the hands for this kit are from this shared runner here back when Bandai was using these standardized hand parts, but this was never too consistent for the Federation Square hands and you never really know when you'd get these and when you'd get entirely custom made ones. Here's a look at one of the chrome runners because I know you'd enjoy it a bit more up close and everything here is undergated and we do get the slightly softer corners that we get with chrome kits because of the added thickness of the plating and the clear yellow paint. There are minor pimples and speckles here and there but it's all really to be expected. We get a sheet of foil stickers with a black one here for the eyes and then this other one if you want the eyes to be showing. This green one here is for the head camera on the front and this one here for the back. These long red ones are for the front of the collar. Then these ones are for the back of the arms. Each set of these line the inner side of the armor here that border the thrusters on the legs. These ones here go onto the red details on the front of the shield. Then this long one goes on the underside right here. This last green sticker is for the aiming sensor of the beam rifle. For the instructions, we get more studio shots of the kit than on the box along with the color guide at the very bottom. On the inside, we get flavor text on the Delta Gundam and all its parts, and at the very bottom, we have a plug for the MSs related to this with the classic HUC Hakushiki, and also the classic HUC Zeta, which I've reviewed before, you know, go watch it, I really like that kit. The other side has some story text about deploying the Delta Gundam in a computer simulated environment, but again, sadly, it's all in Japanese. The other half of the page, and then this other page here on the color side are all used for assembly instructions. The black and white side is also used for assembly instructions, as you'd expect. About two hours later, we have the completed Delta Gundam here all chromed up. Now if you're an old fan like me, a chrome kit like this isn't really that unusual for Bandai back in the 90s because they made a lot of chrome kits head to toe like this. But for this kit here, the chrome is a bit special, because if we look at the lower wing right here, it's all one single piece, but guess what? It's chromed and colored on both sides. One of the biggest strengths of this kit is how every visible surface is colored on both sides, so you'll never really see an uncolored or unchromed surface that they didn't cover up. That takes some careful planning from the designers, and this deserves extra praise. The actual shininess of the parts here come from the actual metal plating, which involves etching the surface of plastic with acid to make it nice and rough. And there are a few more steps involved, but let's just assume the surface right now is good enough to let metal stick onto it. Now the resulting parts are always silver because usually it's nickel that they use and not actually chrome which is a little yellowish. What Bandai does is they then spray on a coat of clear color, like yellow to create the final gold color, or any other color that they need for any other kits. Usually this is only done to one side to save money. 
For the Delta Gundam, the color is applied to both sides for some of the parts so that we get the proper gold color in every nook and cranny. But of course, this also contributes to that nasty price tag of the kit. But it's not all good though, because we do get some nasty seam lines which are the bane of chrome kits. The worst one here is this one here that splits the entire shoulder armor. And then we got these ones on the back of the hands. And then there's this really bad one splitting the front and the back of the head. And of course, there are these really long ones that run along the entire wing binder. Now it could be worse, and the rest of the kit does do its best to avoid seams altogether, but in 2012, the design wasn't yet able to dodge all of the seams. And there's really nothing you can do about it, because you can't stand a chrome kit, so you're gonna have to live with whatever seams there are in this imperfect design. This is also the rare occasion to give a quick tutorial on how to unchrome a kid if you're a builder, and this is honestly not a skill most modelers will ever need much of. But if you need to paint this kit for a build, you first need to remove the chrome. And there are specific products for this still on the market, but that stuff is usually very expensive and you don't actually need it. What you need is this. Yes, this is oven cleaner. All you need to do is get a plastic container that's big enough to soak whatever you need in a mixture of oven cleaner and water, and in about a day or two, all of the paint and the metal layer will be easily stripped off. This is what I did for this Legends BB Superior Dragon kit that was originally fully chrome just like the Delta Gundam. In case you're horrified and wondering what kind of a monster would take off chrome plating, I actually wanted this guy to look like this prototype of the model kit that's seen in the pamphlet here, where it's just in plain yellow. So yes, oven cleaner absolutely works. But for the Delta Gundam, you actually have a unique second option because you can actually buy all of the chrome parts but without the chrome. Some of you might know this already, and the answer is with the Mega Shiki from Build Fighters Try, which actually has all the gold parts but in plain purple plastic. So combining the two kits will allow you to paint the kit any way you like with this purple Delta Gundam here. You can't just make the Delta Gundam from the Mega Shiki, so you do need both kits. Back to the Delta Gundam, let's look at the parts of the designs that are meant to call back to other older MSV designs, starting with the head itself, which is taken almost entirely from this version of the prototype Zeta Gundam. And yes, that is the same head transplanted onto this later design, with very minor cosmetic changes. The strange looking shield is actually taken from the prototype Zeta Gundam, and even though the geometry is a little bit different, this is meant to remind you of that other shield. Then we have the feet that are actually the ones used for the Hakushiki Kai, and these are small elements that hint at how parts of the Delta Gundam's design ended up being moved to later MS designs. Taking a closer look at the head, one of the biggest problems here is that you don't actually have easy access to the face inside, so you need to pry open the head if you ever want to swap the eye sticker. Not that you can do that many times before the stickers get ruined anyway, but it is still bad design that you are forced to pick one or the other permanently rather than the kit giving you swappable parts. If you do have the Mega Shiki, you do get the entire head as a leftover part, so that can solve this problem if you're going to paint the entire kit. Now let's talk about this being an upgrade to the HGUC Hakushiki that never actually became an upgraded Hakushiki, and fans back then really scratched their heads for a number of years. Here it is next to the classic HGUC Hakushiki. Now mine here is that terrifying sewage waste color because this is the one included with the Mega Bazooka launcher. The original kit was chrome like the Delta Gundam. Anyway, here you can see the radical update to the modern proportions which really makes the older Hakushiki look a little bit stocky. The feet especially look wonderful in the newer mold and it's elongated with lots of room to show off that exposed frame. The arms are entirely reshaped as well, and this is a massive upgrade if we compare any part that it shares with the Hakushiki. So this is why it's extra strange that the Delta Gundam was never made into a better Hakushiki. This massive improvement was locked away on this guy and Bandai just never did anything with it. Four years later, in 2016, the revived Hakushiki came along. I don't have that kit itself, but I do have its close cousin, the Lunar Gazer. So four years into the future, we get these new legs where the calves are tucked way up even higher to show even more of that sexy frame. There are extra bits of color separations like the thrusters here that are further split into an entirely different color altogether. The legs are about the same length, but the thighs are shortened to give us even more of the shin. The arms got way improved as well, like the pipes being reshaped and that middle part between them being hollowed out. 
the lower arm is made much thicker, but the bicep is slimmed down, though that may not be to everyone's taste. And there's even more crazy color separation here, like the circle on the arm right here, just because Bandai could do this in 2016. Now what I mean to say here isn't that the Delta Gundam is terrible, I mean actually it's quite the opposite. It was state of the art in 2012 with improvements over the classic Kakushiki that everyone would love. But it is curious that this one off in between design was locked away and it has nothing to do with the later revived Kakushiki, which is stranger the more you think about it. This is a phantom revived Kakushiki that you never knew existed and Bandai never made use of. For weapons, we get the Delta Gundam's custom beam rifle, which was an entirely new thing that was made for this design when it was created in the 2010s. This gun isn't taken from any older MS, even though you do see elements from other guns right here. It is two pieces sandwiched together with a separate barrel, and the grip is a little bit awkward and grey like that. The handle has a slot here, so the hand anchors right into it, and this is the best type of grip that we all love. The handle flips up as well and it gives us a small peg so we can stow the gun away onto the wing binder, though this is probably meant more for the wave rider mode, but it does work fine in MS form as well. Here's the shield of the Delta Gundam, and all that big flat surface really becomes uneven with the chrome layer and then the paint layer added on top of it. It does bug you a little bit from time to time once you know it's there. The inner side is fully covered with no ugly hollow spaces. And that small triangle wedge here is meant to hint at the future Zeta Gundam's shield design, and this one here also serves as the Wave Rider's nose. The shield attaches to the forearm with a little slit, and it does struggle a little bit to keep the shield on sometimes. Stowed inside the shield here are the beam saber handles, which you have to claw at a little bit to get them out. The beam effect parts are the shorter kind, which you don't get quite as much in yellow, but you can swap in any other longer ones if you have extra ones that you can donate. They fit into the hands at an angle, but sadly there is a bit of wiggle room for it to rattle around. For the hands, we get a right holding hand, a left closed hand, and then a right trigger finger hand, and then a pair of open palms. There are four black hand covers that are left over and these are actually very useful extra parts because the generic hands often come with more hands than cover, like this one right here that has one, two, and three hands but it only has two covers, and we almost never get extra hand covers to make up for that, so all four of these are quite valuable if you have a lot of these extra hands. You've probably seen this holding hand in a number of other kits before and they've always been very well sculpted. It would have been nice to have the holding hand on the left as well, and it really is quite rare to see a kit not have one. The closed hand is more or less the same story. It's well sculpted, but for some reason it's only for the left hand and not the right. The open palms are always a welcome addition, which you know I'd say that. They're always more rare on HG kits, and it's great whenever we see them. The trigger finger hand is bespoke to the Delta Gundam, and it doesn't fit most other weapons on other kits because of the slit inside, but otherwise, it is a nice sculpt that fits in with the other hands that we get. We get this block here for the Wave Rider mode, and I'm a fan of parts forming kits, which seems to be an unpopular opinion, but I do like how sturdy the MS and the Wave Rider forms end up being. The block here deserves extra praise for having the entire front skirt section duplicated here. These are exactly the same parts, so you don't have to yank them and swap them around. There are also different shoulder parts here that fit the shape of the Wave Rider a little bit better. To transform the Delta Gundam to the Wave Rider, we have to strip down the MS like this. The back skirt goes onto here, and then the outer panels of the side skirts go here. And then the arm slides into the slots on the frame here, pointing straight back and then we can flip the shoulder armor back down. The feet need an ankle swap here where we pull up the toes like this, and fit it onto these other ankles that point them straight down. Then this all goes back into the leg. The legs get folded towards the front, and then they're plugged back into the frame like this. The wing binders slide into the sides like this, and you can swing out the winglet on the top part here, and then angle the wing on the bottom. The backpack goes onto the top. The shield plugs right into the bottom, and then the beam rifle is stowed onto any one of the wings. You'll notice that this is a starkly different shape from the Zetas' Wave Rider, where the legs are on the bottom this time and there's no tail stabilizer up at the top. It's an interesting change where we're probably really used to seeing the shape of the Zetas' Wave Rider, 
This is more in the shape of a traditional aircraft and it's good if you're not a big fan of the Zetas' gigantic flying armor. This is a perfectly fine transformation and it adds a lot to the Delta Gundam. For the articulation, the head goes up a little bit and down a little bit as well. It can't turn a full circle because of the shape of the helmet. The shoulders can swing forward and back a little bit like this. And the arms swing outwards but it can't manage 90 degrees. They do rotate a full circle if you avoid the wing binders on the back. The biceps allow a full rotation though it is a bit stiff. The elbow bends a bit over 90 degrees. The hands can be adjusted on their ball joint. And they can rotate a full circle. The waist can dip forward a little bit and backwards a little bit like this. It turns side to side but the armor blocks it from turning a full circle. The wing binders can't be adjusted on their ball joint and of course you can rotate the whole thing as well. The front skirts go all the way up like this. The side skirts lift up a little bit like this. The back skirt doesn't move at all. The thigh is on a ball joint so the range it can move is a little bit limited. The forward kick is limited by the front skirt unfortunately. And then there is barely any backwards kick at all. The knee folds nearly 180 degrees like this. The ankle armor swings along a single axis. The ankle is a single ball joint. And the toes can actually fold quite a lot even though it's not enough for the transformation. The vent on the back of the leg can move a little bit as well. The Delta Gundam is an early modern kit and you're gonna recognize almost all of the articulation as things that you might see today. It's not quite as ultra flexible as truly modern kits, but you'll never really think much of it when you're posing the kit. Kakushiki type kits always pose really well with the help of the wing binders on the back and the Delta Gundam is no different. Zeta kits and Hakushiki kits really need great articulation to show off their sleek silhouettes and the Delta Gundam gets a solid pass in this area. For size comparisons, here it is next to the classic HUC Hakushiki one more time. And here is the Lunar Gazer. It's too bad I don't have the actual revived Hakushiki so this height comparison isn't quite complete but we can tell that the Delta Gundam isn't suddenly way taller than the others. And here it is with the Lunar Gazer and the Mega Shiki. The build fighter kids really love their pointed legs and high heels so the Mega Shiki looks a little bit taller even if you don't count the giant cannon that's sticking up from behind it. And here is the purple Delta Gundam one more time because it took me forever to swap these parts around. And here is the purple wave rider which we didn't get to see earlier. The wine red parts of the Delta Gundam really worked quite well with the purple main color. And here is the lower end benchmark, the entry grade RX-78. And here is the upper end benchmark, the high grade new Gundam. The Zeta families are tall MSs and the Delta Gundam is no difference but it does stay at the 20 meter mark and it's clearly shorter than the big boy new Gundam. And that MS height is an entire story worth its own story but as you'd expect the Delta Gundam will play nicely with your other 1144 kits. With all that said, here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict on the HUC Delta Gundam. Number 1, it's a contentious design on a very well made kit. A lot of fans back around 2010 didn't like Bandai digging up the Delta Gundam and giving it a face, fearing that this will lead to some stupid side story where the MS was actually secretly built and fought in some forgotten skirmishes or some other nonsense. So it's good for us that all of that never happened and Bandai kept it all in their pants. But still, many fans to this day aren't comfortable with the Delta Gundam which added the design and lore to the 80s canon. I think ultimately the design is okay with some proper nod to older MSV designs. The gold color is a little bit on the nose and I agree with some people online that it doesn't make a lot of sense that it is gold like the Hakushiki but the resulting kit is kinda nice all chromed up like this and the designers went an extra step to make a great kit that works with the plating. It's kinda hard to hate it too much once you have it in your hands and you get the feeling that the designers really did care a lot about this kit. And number 2, this kit is expensive and rare. Let's be real, 4,536 yen is a lot to pay for any standard size HG kit. The Kshatriya is just a stone throw away at 4,950 yen. The RG Wing Gundam is 1,000 yen cheaper than this guy and that thing is a real grade. So if you're not a big fan of the gold color, then this kit is demanding that you pay extra money for basically nothing. 
What's worse is that this kit isn't even easy to buy. Bandai doesn't reprint this very often, and when it does get reprinted, it sells out really quickly, even at that stupid asking price. Truth be told, there are a lot of wonderful choices if you're going to put that 4,500 yen towards other kits. So I have to say this is a very specialized niche kit for people who specifically really want it. Maybe this review helps you decide if you're in that camp or not. And number 3, this kit is for Hyakushiki fans. The Delta Gundam is basically a mutant Hyakushiki. And if you happen to be a super fan of the Hakushiki, this really is the phantom member of the family that you're going to want to own. It's going to fit right in with all the other members of the family. If you add in how this is basically an abandoned redesign between that classic kit and the revive, it's even more amazing to own as a model. The decision here really is simple if you're such a fan and this is an important kit to own in your collection. Expensive or not, hard to find or not. So that's a review of the HUC Delta Gundam, the only Chrome retail kit that Bandai still regularly puts out, and it's one that's made for people who particularly loves all its eccentricities. Thank you so much for watching. Come look us up on social media with updates on upcoming videos and sneak peeks at future projects. Links are in the description below. Or hang out here some more with one of these other videos. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.